Oh, Zoro, Zoro, Zoro. What the fuck is up with that eye, bro? Seriously, I want to know. I think we all want to know. I think the entire One Piece fandom is waiting with their assholes puckered, white knuckled, waiting to find out what the hell's up with that eye of yours. You show up after the time skip, big ass scar over your left eye. That's like anime logic, like shit's about to go down. None of the other Straw Hats apparently paid it any mind, though. Like, like everyone was just like, oh, hey, Zoro, it's been a while. What's going on? No, my first question would be like, oh, what the fuck happened to your eye, Zoro? Jesus Christ, damn. Um... Anyway, I have compiled five theories on what is up with Zoro's eye. Uh, some of these are popular theories in the community right now. Others are ones that are maybe not as rewarding because we all like to think that it's going to be some sort of uh, big payoff with Zoro's eye. Uh, we all like to think like he's gonna, he's going to open his eye up when he's fighting against like you know Fujitora or something, and it's going to be like the fucking Sharingan or the Rinnegan or like the fuck you gone. You know, not not seriously like that, but we expect it to be something like really cool. Like he has a magic demon eye now, um, or who knows though? Maybe he just got drunk when he was training with Mihawk, and then he passed out on his swords, and that's how he got the scar. Number five, Katetsu's curse. Okay, so do you guys remember that Zoro has a cursed sword? Um, I bring this up because it's not really mentioned that much in the series anymore. When it was initially revealed in Logtown, uh, Sandai Katetsu, or Katetsu III, when, you know, Zoro was going around shopping for new swords, he found this really cheap-ass sword, and the shop owner didn't want to sell it to him because it was cursed. It was the third in the lineage of the Katetsu blades, which are apparently, like, really bad juju coming from those. Um, there's also Nidai Katetsu and Ichidai Katetsu. Now, um, Zoro thought, oh man, this is a match made in heaven, you know, because, you know, uh, you know, he's sort of like the heavenly demon, like, Yasuka thing going on there when, when he goes into his, really, like, when he goes into his battle mode, he got, like, images of demons and shit behind him. So he's like, oh, a fucking cursed sword, awesome. So he picks up the sword and he does that really kind of suicidal thing where he tosses the damn thing up into the air. Apparently this sword shop had a very high ceiling and then he just sticks out his arm and it just, it curves around his arm and then lands. And he's just like, I'll take it. So that was pretty badass. Uh, but it wasn't really mentioned up until after that all that much. Um, when he was in Whiskey Peak uh, and he was trying out his new swords for the first time, uh, Katetsu and Yubashiri, uh, he mentioned that Katetsu was uh, cutting things, you know, w without his command. Like it was a very bloodthirsty sword and he's just like, you know, a good sword pays attention to, his, uh, to its owner. You know, but that was really the last time that Katetsu was really mentioned at being cursed or demonic or anything like that. Um, there was an old school theory that a lot of One Piece fans might remember if you've been following the series for a while, that Zoro would eventually like work his way up through the Katetsu blades. Like he has the third Katetsu right now. He would eventually get um, Nidai Katetsu the second and then Ichidai, which would be Katetsu the first, which is like a really high rank blade. I think it's on the same rank as, uh, um, it's not on the same rank. Is it on the same rank as Mihawk Sword? I think it is. I think that's the only other sword that was mentioned to be on a similar rank with uh, Mihawk's uh, Yaru. So the general theory is that whatever happened with his eye, it related to Katetsu in some way. His eye getting damaged, and when he opens it up, it's going to be like a demon eye. Now, what the fuck does that mean? He's got a demon eye? I don't know, it sounds badass, but um, we don't exactly know what abilities it would present to him. But we understand, look at, look at the facts here with Zoro's character. Um... He is, uh, there's a lot of demonic shit going on whenever he gets, like, seriously, you know, bloodthirsty, you know? Um, there's a lot of references to Buddhism with Zoro. Uh, you got, like, 36, 72, 108 pound phoenixes. Those are all, phoenix eye? Phoenixes? Whatever. Those are all relevant numbers in Buddhism. Uh, 3,000 worlds, and then he has, like, the greater 3,000 worlds, you know, Ichidai, Sanzen, Daisen, Sakai. That's, like, teachings of Buddhism, you know, like, the universe, like, the, the universe consists of, like, a thousand worlds, and then times a thousand, you know, a thousand upon a thousand um he has that yeah yasuka crow technique that's also referenced you know the yasuka are like devils you know so and in rashomon of course and of course he has ashra which is uh prevalent in hindu and buddhist teachings um so he's got oda likes to do like whenever you know zoro gets really pumped up for a fight really gets into it you know he has demonic shit appearing behind him um so there's there's a theme with that like maybe he has like a demon soul inside of him or there's something going on here rather demonic it's going to 
turn out to be something greater than just like, oh, I'm gonna draw a demon behind Zoro because it looks really badass when he's when he's fighting. It might tie back to Conqueror's hockey in some way. Um, I'm gonna get into that later on on the list. Uh, but there's theories that you know he wants to be the best swordsman of the world. Obviously, the best swordsman of the world would most likely have a con would have Conqueror's hockey, right? We don't know for a fact that Mihawk has that, but I wouldn't be surprised if he does. Um, but uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, tying back to Katetsu in some way, and it all comes back to the eye itself being different. When he opens the eye, it's going to have like a special property and it's going to be a demon eye. Uh, whatever abilities that would foretell, we're not sure. But also, I thought, okay, because Zoro represents Buddhism so much with his attack names and shit, I wanted to look up to see like what exactly, is there anything in Buddhism that relates specifically to your eyes? And then I found this. Um, the Buddha's eyes are also known as wisdom eyes, and they can look out in the four directions to symbolize the omniscience or the all-seeingness of a Buddha. The, okay, so, um, maybe, maybe not taking that super literally, but, uh, tying it back to hockey in some way, observation hockey perhaps, you know, he opens his eye and he's just super aware of everything around him, like, you know, observation hockey cranked up to like 11 perhaps. I uh, don't know if that's the route uh, Oda's going to take it, uh, but it's certainly an interesting way of looking at how it's, uh, how it's uh, treated in mythology and how it might carry over to Zoro in some way. Number four, awakening his hockey, his secret power, his true potential with it, I guess I should say. So Zoro is obviously most gifted at armament hockey at the moment. We saw that in his fight with Pika. Um, Oda even came out and said which hockey each one of the Straw Hats are currently best at. Uh, Luffy is most gifted at um, uh, Conqueror's Sanji at Observation and Zoro at Armament. However, Zoro also does have Observation Hockey. We saw that when he was, uh, when, when Hody Jones was throwing the, uh, the water, uh, you know, pellets at him. He was just, like, blocking it with his fucking sword, like, you know, piss off, whatever. Um, so he has those both types of hockey right now. But, uh, look, if there's anybody on the Straw Hats that's gonna have Conqueror's hockey... I think it would be Zoro, right? Like, uh, aside from Luffy, of course. Uh, like I said, he wants to be king of the, he wants to be not king of the pirates. He wants to be um, the greatest swordsman in the world. I would say that you know having that would be um, you know kind kind of uh, you know it would make sense because the people that have conquerors hockey have some sort of high ranking position. You know, like Boa Hancock is an empress. You know, um, uh, Rayleigh was the first mate of the fucking king of the pirates. Uh, Luffy wants to be king of the pirates. You know, shit like that. So it would make perfect sense to me for him having conquerors hockey. Perhaps not right now in the series, maybe much further down the line. Um, something else also, and I don't know if this is just an artist, uh, the quip with Oda, or if this is something actually in the series that's relevant, but when a lot of characters exhibit Conqueror's Hockey, their eyes do change a little bit. They go and like the, like the pupils tend to like dilate a bit. And it looks like there's like extra rings in their eyes whenever they use Conqueror's Hockey. We saw this with Rayleigh, we saw this with Luffy. Um... Yeah, so I don't know if that's just, you know, Oda's, like, artist representation to show the view, show the reader that that person is using hockey, uh, or if it's going to be something like that. No, that actually happens. But also keep in mind that that eye only stays like that for as long as they're using Conqueror's Hockey, which is always for a brief amount of time. You know, the whole deal with Conqueror's Hockey, even when Rayleigh uses it, and Rayleigh's like a master at it, it only lasts a few seconds. You know, you go out there, you fucking Conqueror's Hockey, and you knock all the fuckers out, and then that's it. You know, it doesn't usually stick around for longer. We've seen it like that, with like like when, uh, when uh, Luffy clashed with Chin Zhao, when Luffy fought against Doflamingo, it lasted a little bit longer. Um, but usually it's a one-and-done sort of thing. Maybe it would be cool if uh, Zoro's eye is in somehow like a constant state of Conqueror's Hockey, right? This is sort of tying back to Naruto, how Nar how Kakashi has the Sharingan, it's always active, so he has to keep his eyes shut in order to not constantly use it. So, maybe it's some deal like that. Maybe it's something with, you know, he has this eye that's been, you know, awakened with hockey, and if he, you know, he has to keep it closed all the time because it's constantly active, but whenever he opens it, because Zoro's never really, he hasn't fought against a super powerful opponent yet. Zoro has not been pressed against the wall yet since the time skip. Who, who is he fought against? Okay, he fought against Hyozu in Fishman Island. That was not even really... He didn't even bother with him. 
He's just like, you're a, you're a big fish in a small pond, basically. Cut that guy down, no fucking problem. Fought against Monet at Punk Hazard. Once again, not a fucking problem at all. Sliced her right in half. Didn't even have to use hockey. Relied purely on, like, his, his the, the blood, the bloodlust to, like, and the shock of getting cut in half so damn quickly to, like, fuck with her mentally so she couldn't reform herself, so didn't even care about that. The first fight that Zoro even used his armament hockey in was against Pika, and even then... Zoro, I mean, Pico was a, he was a pain in the ass opponent because he was very difficult to fight against. He's not the kind of opponent you could just run up to and cut because he had that fucking stone assimilation shit. Um, but so he had to go hockey there, but that's the only time he's had to use hockey. He's never been pressed up against a wall like, holy shit, I'm getting beaten down here. I better, you know, you know, I, I have to get, use some like last ditch effort, some like really powerful technique. We haven't gotten to that point yet. I hope we'll get there in Wano because you're going to be dealing with a lot of badass samurai and then the fucking Shogun and Kaido and all the Kaido subordinates in Wano. So hopefully when we get there, you know, he'll have like, he'll, he'll be in a fight that's pretty serious and he'll have to rely, if he has any secret techniques, he'll have to rely on that. So um, hopefully, yeah, we'll see that if it's, it ties back to hockey in some way. Number three. Um, this is going to be the most boring one, but maybe it's just an art change on Oda's part, aesthetically. That's all it is. Odo was, you know, going through all the different rough sketches, you know, of Zoro over the time skip. He he went over the right, he had a bunch of rough sketches for all the Straw Hats, you know, like what their hair was going to be like and what outfits they were going to wear. A bunch of different rough sketches before he settled on the current one that he went with. Um, but perhaps Odo was just thinking, well, you know what? Zoro's a badass swordsman, so he needs a badass scar to look even more badass. And so that's why I gave him the scar. It's not going to play into anything. It's not going to be relevant. Um, it's just there. And that's maybe why the Straw Hats didn't mention it. Nobody really ever mentioned Zoro's scar. Um, it was mentioned, like, by that random fisherman dude when uh, Sanji was, you know, Sanji was going around looking for him. And he's like, yeah, there was a one-eyed fisherman, uh, one-eyed swordsman here. And Sanji's just like, one-eyed? You know what? Uh, but that was, like, the only time his scar was ever actually mentioned by any of the Straw Hats, you know? And, and he wasn't even there at the time. Um, so perhaps that's the case, you know? And, and Oda's just trolling everybody. Just like, oh, you're, you think he's gonna open the eye and it's gonna be, like, some world-ending shit. But no, it's just, it's just, I decided to do it because it looked cool. Um, yeah. It's also the same thing with, uh, remember how Zoro first appeared in the time skip? He was, uh, he cut that galleon in half and on, uh, Shisui, it looked like it had, a uh, Law's, uh, sheath with the cross and then he had to later change that um and the same thing happened with uh the cover page how zoro had the scar on his right eye at first and then changed it over to the left side that's that's what happens so maybe just like artist error there um but yeah it, it's possible I, I i know we don't like to think of it like that we like to think that there's something more to it we don't like to think oda's gonna troll us with like a red herring or something but i would say it's possible that it's just uh just an aesthetic change uh the same way with sanji's eye remember sanji's eye had a lot of debate for a while what that was going to be and it was turned out like no no he doesn't have a special eye or anything it's just he parts his hair on one side and then after the time skip, he parts it on the other side, and the eye is perfectly fine. The, the big shocker there was that his eyebrows curled as asymmetrically. The same thing with that. Um, you know, Usopp's really muscular now, and he's got a goatee. Nami has way larger hair. Really huge, huge hair. Um, yeah, just aesthetic changes. They don't mean really anything in terms of, like, their abilities or their powers. Number two. It's an injury. <laughs> Now, I know what you might be thinking. Well, like, well, no shit, Matt. It's an injury. We, we could figure that out. He has a giant-ass scar. We, we could assume that he was injured at some point. But how was he injured? That's the kicker. I think a lot of people assumed automatically, you know, because he was training with Mihawk for two years, that those that injury is because of Mihawk. You know, he was sparring with Mihawk, and Mihawk cut his fucking face open. He can't use his eye anymore. Um, you know, you can't train with Mihawk without getting some battle damage, right? So that made sense. Like, all right. That's, a, that's one possibility. Another possibility is what if Zoro did it to himself? Now, we're not talking about, like, Katetsu, like, you know, accidentally, or Katetsu got, like, bloodthirsty or whatever, cut his eye. We're talking, like, Zoro actually cut his own eye. Now, why would he do this? Well, there's a few we don't really know if he would do this, but we know Zoro takes his pride as a swordsman very fucking seriously. This goes back to when he was fighting against Mihawk the first time back in the East Blue. And, you know, after he was defeated by Mihawk, you know, he kind of, he sheaves his sword. Both of his other swords are broke. Turns around and Mihawk's like, what are you doing? And, you know, Zoro is just like, the scars on the back are a swordsman's shame. Mihawk's just like, 
All right, and just slices him upside the the fucking chest. You know, he he takes very he takes great pride in this. You know, um, if Zoro ever did get an injury on his back or something like that, I can feel like that would be something that would damage his pride. So perhaps. Zoro did something that he hated, something against his pride, something that damaged, you know, his feelings as like, as like, I'm not a real swordsman or something happened with him emotionally. And he felt like as, uh, as penance for this, in order to make up for this thing that happened that I am disgraced by, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, you know, take my eye, you know, cause you know, that, that, and, and this is just going back to an idea like, you know, swordsmen being blind. You know, you could be a badass blind swordsman, as we saw with Fujitora. But the eyes are obviously very important to swordsmen. So, um, yeah, perhaps something happened there. I, we have no idea what that might have happened. If he did get a scar on his back or something happened, he did something himself that he regretted or something like that while he was training. I don't know. But the idea that he may be self-inflicted onto himself, I don't think that should be left out. And that would be something that, of course, you know, we, we all think that Mihawk gave it to him or there's something else going on with the demon eye. If it turned out, you know, like I did this to myself because of this. You know, I think that would also be a very impact. That would be a very impactful revelation about Zoro. Zoro's eye. And the number one theory behind what's up with Zoro's eye, it's perfectly fine. His eye is not damaged at all, it's the same as it always was. Now, he has the scar, obviously, but it's possible that you can get a scar over your eye and your eyelid without actually damaging your eye itself, you know? So, he got cut perhaps, but he chooses, the eye itself is fine, and he chooses to keep it shut. Now, why would he do this? Well, here's the thing. We don't know a lot about what happened with Mihawk, how he trained him. Um, in the anime, it was like we had this this scene where he fought against that King Humandril, that, you know, the one that uses, like, Mihawk's sword and shit, but that was, that was non-canon. The only information we had on how uh, Mihawk trained Zoro is when he was teaching him about hockey, right? And uh, Mihawk was sitting there and he was just like, you know, all blades can be black, you know, just like my black sword, you know, and he was teaching him about hockey. And one of the things that he got, you know, he, he used in order to, you know, get Zoro to learn about hockey was like, until you've mastered this uh, hockey, I forbid you to touch alcohol. Okay, and that got Zoro's ass moving. <laughs> you know, that, that, that's how he mastered, probably mastered hockey in less than a day, I would assume. Um, but that was what, he had to do certain things to like handicap him to, to kind of like, you know, get his ass moving. Like, you're forbidden to touch alcohol until you learn hockey. Maybe another handicap that maybe Mihawk imposed on him or Zoro imposed upon himself was, you know, even after his training was done, even after he was ready to head back to Sabaondi, he was just like, or Mihawk was like, you know, like, I forbid you to use that left eye for a year or like for six months or something. I forbid you to use that left eye, you know, in fights, you know, because look at how badass Zoro is right now, even with one eye. Can you imagine? It would be like Kenpachi's eye patch, essentially. It would be like, you know, Kenpachi takes off the eye patch. Like, I'm even stronger now. I'm like twice as strong as I was. Same shit with Zoro. Zoro is fighting against a like really strong opponent like the fucking Shogun and Wano Kuni. And um, he gets beaten down, and the Shogun's like, whoa, ha, ha, you can't beat me. And Zoro's just like, all right, and then just opens his eye and just <laughs> cuts him in fucking half, you know? Because um, it's like his whole visual range just opens up, and it's just like, it's it's essentially a superpower at that point, you know? Um, but yeah, those, those are the five theories I have. Uh, some of them are more interesting than others. Some of them, we don't really know where they could go. Like the whole demon eye thing. It's certainly a possibility. What it could entail, though, is, you know, anybody's guess. Um, but it's interesting to look at that. It's interesting to look at the different traits that Zoro exhibits himself. Uh, you know, it ties to Buddhism and everything. That might tie back to that. That might be what Odo's going for here. Um, but, uh... Yeah, I, I really hope it is something, though. I hope it's not just an aesthetic change. I hope that it is something that Zoro is going to reveal later on in the story, even if it's not something overpowered, even if it is just like, oh, I got cut by Mihawk, and that's the origin of the scar, or, oh, I am using this as a handicap, you know, and I open my eye, and boom, then I can, you know, fucking cut shit bitches down, like, three seconds flat. Um, but yeah, I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Comment below on what your theories on Zoro's eye are. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure to subscribe to the channel, all that good shit. This will be Teching 101, signing out.